Some of you may know that I have uh, been in the process of changing engines from Unity to Godot for no reason at all. No reason. Everything's dandy. Everything's fine. No reason. <laughs> no, no, no reason. People move engines for countless reasons, whether your project just requires a different engine because of the tool set and the capabilities of it, or, you know, a company messes up. I don't really have any examples of uh, companies messing up recently. But regardless of reasons for moving engines, the experience can be quite similar, whether it's as smooth as butter or feel like you're wiping with sandpaper. So here's my experiences. Being completely honest, my experience moving over from Unity to Godot has been a bit temperamental. At the very start, I was very very reluctant to even... Basically, I'd burnt out. While I didn't struggle to finish my last project in Unity because of motivation reasons, finishing that project and having the impetus and drive to learn something new had just depleted. I was so unmotivated. And the reason why, which I think a lot of people are feeling right now, whether you're moving video uh, editors or <laughs> game engines, the sense of frustration somebody has when you feel quite competent in one tool to then have to, mm, sometimes forced and sometimes by your own volition, completely out of your depth. And something that you felt like you could do in five seconds suddenly takes an entire week. Because where, where, where? Where do, where do I, where do I, what? Knowing where things are and what to do initially and then suddenly not knowing where things are or how to do the thing you already know how to do is such a motivation killer. It doesn't matter if you've got massive willpower. Initially, you're gonna be like, what the f Since then, I have actually forced myself to dive into Godot, uh, mostly on stream, so uh, follow over on Twitch, by the way. Over time, it's been getting better. I just, I think most people will find moving, especially from Unity to Godot, for reasons I'll get into later. That's not to say that I haven't had lots of mental hurdles. I mean, I have those anyway, trust me. In some areas, there are definitely places where there are either a few more steps or some things are a little bit easier, but depending, it depends on what you're trying to do, really. That's not to say that I haven't struggled learning the new API, because there are some certain things that have cut on my ass. So, good news is that the API is, as you would expect, extremely similar between GDScript and C Sharp. So much so that you can follow a, G a GDScript tutorial on YouTube or the documentation even, and be able to just translate it into C Sharp. The documentation's really good in that there is a tab for uh, C Sharp code snippets, which is extremely good documentation in itself. J look at it. Just look at it. Another hurdle that I've thrown myself over is the way Godot is designed. The design philosophy with Godot is that everything is nodes. You work, use nodes for every single thing and GDScript, in fact, is built with that in mind. In some aspects, it is similar to Unity uh, and, and Unreal, but in other aspects, it's not. For example, in Godot, each node has its unique purpose, right? This node is the box collider. This, this is, this is the box collider, right? It does nothing else unless you attach a script to it, which can do what you want it to. Um, but the sole purpose of this, it's a box collider. And that is usually a child of an area node or a, a collision detection node. I can't remember the name off the top of my head at the moment. The engine lives and breathes its hierarchy. You can't put multiple components on a single node, but a node can have multiple child nodes, which would be its multiple components, right? This is probably the biggest hurdle in terms of like concept and th to wrap your head around. This has ruined everything. And I think this is the point of Godot, right? This would be its own individual node, and then this would be a node underneath it. This is this is the mistake. Because it's not like a Unity with components. This is a mistake. Oh shit! It's not that bad. I'm not I won't I'm not gonna big it up that much. It, it is it is a bit different. It does take it does take a quick second to go, oh, but then you um you do get the hang of it. Uh, it's just different. Like, like every engine has its own quirks. Every engine works differently. 
tools are different. A, a sledgehammer in... Um, where the f*** was that going? That you will go through uh, moments where you're like... Well, actually, the engine I used uh, before... <laughs> uh, did it better. I think the component system's way much better than uh, the, the node-based uh, engine of Godot. <laughs> but you get used to it, and you, uh, you shut that nerd up. <laughs> Why are you watching this? <laughs> so after having spent some time with Godot and building something competent there are engine differences of course there, there will be but there are there are a, there's a handful that irk me a little bit in my experience of learning Godot so far and I'm going to tell you them right now there does seem to be a lot of features in Godot that are because it's open source and made by the people uh, definitely feel like they're they've been implemented to Im make your life better like for example the character controller that is built into or native to Godot uh, which is a node you can just quickly throw on like it is a component in Unity it's so much better in terms of like default options like you can you can define the 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 type of movement whether it's a floaty one or if it's a traditional like on the floor one it is a thing it like it is it is a very good base to use and if you didn't even expand it you don't have to and it'd be fine you you could use that and have that for the entirety of your project and you'd be fine so huge positive there gd script seems like a decent language it's very python-esque with little nuances here and there it's purpose-built for the engine and the way the engine has been designed to be used uh, for example there aren't things like interfaces from what i can tell because the role of an interface is in Godot, anyway, interchanged with creating nodes that trigger events or signals, as they are called in Godot, that tell things to, to do things. But I'm a C sharp boy, through and through, and I hate indentation. And you should too. Tell me why I'm wrong in the comments. I'm sure that'll be great for engagement. <laughs> or getting cancelled. Not sure which, you decide. Speaking of C-sharp, using C-sharp in Godot, where it hasn't locked down to a specific version of C-sharp has just revolutionised and made me realise how many new features I can now use of C-sharp. Like, you know, async methods. I know Unity has coroutines, but they're not actually async. They're, they're just, they just stop their processing and come back the next frame. Whereas async functions are actually asynchronous. So that was just quite nice. It was also a very big um, mental jump. Start using um, asynchronous functions instead of coroutines because initially my brain was a little bit like, hang on a minute, what am I doing? Like, what what, what do I do here? Where, where, where's my coroutine? And the final thing that's irked me about my experience with Godot so far or moving over to Godot is ray casting. And the only reason why is because while it is a node, it is a dedicated node, the API for ray casting, in comparison to Unity anyway, remember I'm coming from Unity, in terms of Godot, the, the, there are a couple more steps to doing ray casting and it does require a little bit of understanding of what physics spaces are in state. Um, not, not really, but sort of, just so you know what you're doing. You can pull out the, uh, the colliders and get the reference to the object and do whatever you want to do as you would normally. The small issue with that is that in order to get out the colliders you have to give the index which means you have to use a traditional for loop um, and also get out the number of collisions and then iterate over them y you know what i mean that is just a bit annoying rather than being able to return the list of collisions and just for reaching over them it's such a minor thing but it's just it just feels a little bit annoying in reality it's not really that much harder but it is a, a concept shift in, in comparison to calling a single function, static function in Unity versus um, if you want to do it programmatically instead of using that node in Godot, it is, what, like two more lines? But still, my, I had to wrap my head around it. I had to think, basically. If I've said anything wrong in this video so far, which I probably have, 
uh, please let me know in the comments. Uh, let, uh, let the community know in the comments so we can all come together and share the information, share the knowledge, because uh, I could really do with it right now. <laughs> But yes, I'd really appreciate it, and I uh, thanks in advance. Like I said, all this is easily mitigated with the dedicated node, which you can use. Some people like to do it programmatically, some people like to have a dedicated node for it. If there's a node for it, might as well just use the node, to be honest. But something that does irk me a little bit as well is I didn't really, I don't really know how to do things like sphere casts or box casts or whatever other kind of cast, fish cast, whatever that is. What I've done so far, if there is a better way to do this and there is a way or a similar way to Unity, please let me know. But in terms of a sphere cast for like detecting in a radius what items I can interact with, I do have an, an area node with a collider, a sphere collider that go, has of a certain radius. And I do just track using the signals or events of the area node just to track which um, objects of that physics layer have entered the space and I register it, do a couple calculations or a bit of logic and that's how I'm doing it. If that's the way to do it, that's fine. Just took a little bit of lateral thinking, not even that hard, but it, it like I'm, my point is that moving over to Unity to Godot, it's going to feel alien. It will, as it would do any engine, right? Because you're just learning entirely new concepts and there's nothing wrong with it. It's going to feel frustrating. It just will. And this is the entire crux of the conversation, right? It's between whether it's a new engine or a new tool, it's just learning different ways of doing a thing. And this is what I find drains people's willpower the most. It's the learning how to do something they already knew how to do in a different context, and it can be infuriating. With companies constantly at the moment, or seemingly so, making terrible choices. Most recently with Adobe. This is my first video edited in DaVinci, for example. We need to be, I think that we need to be more open and less apprehensive about using new tools or learning how to do things in something new. And that's me speaking to myself there. And why it makes sense that the sponsor of this video is brilliant. Learning new things and furthering your current understanding doesn't have to be laborious. It can be fun. With Brilliant, you have access to thousands of interactive lessons in maths, computer science, programming, and AI. Brilliant prides itself on using the power of interactivity to solidify your understanding of the topics you choose, up to six times more effectively than simply watching lectures on the same topic. Topic. Each lesson aims to teach you how to solve problems rather than simply memorising solutions to help make you a better thinker. Brilliant is easily accessible via the app, enabling you to build a daily habit of strengthening your knowledge whenever you have time, even if it's only for a few minutes each day. Programming can often feel a little daunting when getting into game development. With Brilliant's programming courses, you can learn how to program in Python, basic coding fundamentals, or even how to think like a programmer. I'm using Brilliant to rekindle my understanding of equations. As a kid, I wasn't great at it at all, and I'm still not. But so far, Brilliant has helped me relearn those faded concepts and grasp new ones quickly, making me feel confident taking on more advanced concepts later on. Although I won't be building a spaceship just yet. If you're interested in trying everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days and 20% off an annual premium subscription, visit brilliant.org forward slash dark dax or click the link in the description but and this is the important bit that i think is very relatable to anybody who is doing a move to a new engine or tool or already in the process of doing that and is feeling a little bit disheartened um is that you've already done the hard bit and what i mean by that is that when you first started you learned concepts that you had previously no clue about uh, how to, what rigid bodies are, what occlusion culling is, just listing off examples, it doesn't matter if you know what these are right now, you'll come to learn it if you ever do or ever need to. And it doesn't even have to be about game development. It can be about drawing, it could be about modelling, it could be any number of disciplines. You have already done the hard bit, learning new concepts. So, in, in terms of game dev, you, all you're doing is taking your concept that you've learnt, sometimes specific to engines, and you're translating it into this new one. That's all you're doing. 
this is so it is hard it can be hard but the hardest part is learning them in the first place so overall um it's going well i, I feel like i'm doing well I, i've got something going here there's a little uh, look he's he's digging look at that little bone yeah N no uh, if you're wondering what this is by the way um you can find out by following me over on twitch where we um we're currently making this apparently i'm happy with the progress it was very slow to start with um i'm slowly being reinvigorated in game development which is something nice to feel after that slow lulling period just before so it is nice to sort of feel a bit more motivated to to do stuff again but in the meantime thank you to all my patrons for supporting the channel and the creation of content if you'd like to support the channel head on over to patreon.com forward slash dark and pledge as much or as little or nothing at all at the end of the day i'm glad you even watched so yeah that's how it's going um don't really know how to end this one i don't really have a bit in plan in store for you um i've got a doggo hat now got a doggo hat um yeah to be honest i'm wearing shorts as you can tell I, uh, I don't know let's start a fight shall we um c sharp is better than gd script and indented languages are shit.